So let's continue now here in part two of our review of simple linear regression, that is modeling a quantitative response variable from a quantitative explanatory variable. We've already looked at these first two bullets here, that is creating a scatter plot and a Pearson's correlation coefficient and a coefficient of determination. Now we're going to move on to least squares regression. So the least squares regression equation is provided right here in general terms. What we need to do is we need to fill in some values for the regression coefficients. The regression coefficients are b sub 0 and b sub 1. We have two regression coefficients. When we have a set of data, what we are trying to do is to find those regression coefficients so that this equation will in fact give us the best line through the data points as we can possibly get and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. The, this equation can be modeled by a line so and that is called a regression line that will graphically model the relationship between the explanatory and response variables and we can superimpose that right on our scatter plot. An important aspect of this regression line is this second coefficient here. This is the slope and that slope of the regression line will identify how much change there is in the response variable for every unit change in the explanatory variable. Now one more thing before we move on to our R software again and start exploring this with our skin cancer data and that is you probably have noticed that there is a hat over the Y. Why do we have a hat over the Y? Well that's because we are estimating a value. The only way that Y is actually going to be equal to this regression equation, that is the only way that this value here is going to be exactly what we get when we use this little formula, is if the correlation is 1. If the correlation is not 1, then we are going to end up with different values for Y than what we actually observe for Y. There is going to be a discrepancy between the Y we observe and the Y we predict. So the Y with a hat on it indicates that this is the predicted value to separate it from the Y without a hat, which is the observed value. So there's a real distinction between those two. Okay, let's go ahead to our R and take a look with our R, what, um, how we can create this regression model. So here is the command to do this. Um, I can name this left-hand side over here. This is our object. I can name that object anything I want. And so I'm going to give it a name that helps me remember what it is. It's going to be our model for our skin cancer. So I'm going to call it skin model with a little underscore between. This is the actual R function being carried out. We have the function itself is named LM. LM standing for linear model. And then that function needs to have an argument in it in which we model a response, in this case mortality, from an explanatory variable, in this case latitude. So we have mort and lat. This little tilde here this represents or can be read as, as a function of. So we want a linear model in which mortality is a function of latitude. Once I have that model, if I didn't have this command here on line 39, let me temporarily remove it and show you. If I didn't have that command, when I click this little arrow, we don't see anything happening. Something really did happen. How do I know? If you go look here in the environment, you see that skin model has been created. And if I click on this little arrow, I see it created a whole bunch of stuff. But I'm actually not seeing it over here. 
there's different things we can do with that skin model. And one of the most common things to do is to get a summary of the results from that linear model, that least simple linear regression that we've done. So let me go ahead and now put that summary back in and here it is, here's the summary. We're gonna leave these residuals lines alone for a minute. The first line just tells us what we did, what the formula was that we used. Let's go down here because this really gets at our regression equation. So our two coefficients are under here under estimate. So B0 is the first estimate and it's 389.19. The second estimate is our slope, minus 5.97 or really close to minus 6.0. So that is our slope. And that slope has that very practical meaning. It tells us for every unit change in the explanatory variable, how much change we're predicting in the response. Remember the explanatory variable here is latitude. So for every one degree increase in latitude, we expect a decrease of six out of 10 million cancer deaths. So go up north one more degree and you have six less cancer deaths per 10 million people. So those form our regression equation. So let's go ahead and write that down. So if I um, call up my, my little screen here, and now we can put in to this regression equation, we have our prediction of y is equal to beta zero or B zero, which is three, eight, nine minus roughly 6.0 times our explanatory variable. Or I could say, to make it a little clearer, that I'm predicting a response. Actually, I can make it clear yet. The response I'm predicting is mortality. So my estimate for mortality is equal to 389 minus 6.0 times the latitude. So that's our regression equation. And we notice that these estimates are actually statistics and therefore they have variation themselves. They have some error involved. So this is the standard error of the B0 and here is the standard error of 0.5984 of B1, the slope. And anytime you have a standard error and a statistic for the slope and for what is called the intercept, you actually could look at whether you have enough stability to be able to infer that value to outside of the study, to a larger population as it were. were. In this particular case, that doesn't have a lot of meaning. Why not? Because we're looking at the 50 states. We have not randomly chosen states from some larger population. But if we had taken a random sample and created the model from the random sample, this T value and the corresponding P value will tell us something about the stability of our estimates and whether in fact it's stable enough to be able to infer with a degree of confidence outside the study. So in this case, I noticed that both of these are very small. This one is two less than two e to the minus 16. That means two times 10 to the negative 16th. So think of it as 16 zeros out in front. So this is very, very small. This one also, 10 to the negative 13, 
very, very small. So it's like moving that decimal place 13 points over to the left. That means with those very, very small p-values, those very high t-values, that this is pretty stable. That does not surprise me. Why? Because our model was a very strong model. Remember that the coefficient of determination we found up here was 0.68. The correlation was negative 0.82. Okay, so we'll talk about these other things down here later on. But right now, let's just focus on that linear model and let's actually look at it. So I'm going to run that plot again, but this time I'm adding another command, AB line, and I'm adding it with the skin model. And what that will do is it will visually show me that model. And I already know the slope. I already know that slope from up here is going to be negative 6. And so that tells me as I go from 30 to 31, I'm dropping down 6 along the y-axis. And that forms that particular line, doing that all across the range of our explanatory variable. 